back on this pole here. This is a original Nissan EVSE uh, electric car charger. Belongs to a friend. Um, and this is come from Japan where their mains electricity runs at 200 volts AC. Whereas in New Zealand here, we run at 230 or 240 volts. And in fact, right at this very moment, we're running bang on 230 volts AC. Um, and it ranges, it'll range from 230 to 245. Um, so this is one of the oh, very original um, models that came with the very first Generation 1 2011 Nissan Leaf. And you can see here input is um, 200 volts AC, um, which is no good. And the, the issue with this rating is that there's a transformer inside, which I've already taken out, um, which is also rated at 200 volts AC and it outputs 19 volts AC. Um, and that, if you run it at 240 volts, will overheat, will run warm or hot, um, and it will run for some time, and then eventually it will give up. And that's what has happened here. So it's no longer outputting 19 volts. Uh, so this is dead. I'm assuming the rest of it is fine. Uh, so, to, in order to resolve this situation, I have bought a new transformer off RS Components, and I'll put a link to this in the links below. And this outputs 18 volts AC. It comes out of two taps, which you can you can parallel in order to double the current. Um, so it'll go 230 volts in and that will cope with 240 volts fine um, and 18 volts out and I happen to know from online that other people have done this as well and the 18 volts is enough to run the circuitry in here um, and if you haven't seen inside one of these so this is the the other end of this goes to one of these and that plugs into your Nissan Leaf and all this box does is sends a control signal down the couple of wires to tell the car how much current it's allowed to draw through this plug. Um, if you try to draw 15 amps through a standard 10 amp plug then the plug will melt and things will go bad um, so you get different versions of this box that send a different signal depending on what kind of connector you've got so the electronics in here tells the car how much current it's allowed to draw so there's a, a version this this end one will run at 15 amps you can get other New Zealand designed or Chinese designed ones that will um, tell the car to draw only 8 amps and they can use a standard plug that looks like in New Zealand it looks like that in America it's a different thing and so on um, so this is good for 16 amps this is good for a maximum of 10 amps. You need a different box to tell the car how much current to suck down the, down the line. So here we are. This is dyed. I've got this new one. Um, and my plan is to snip these off, wire this back up. And then I've also uh, 3D printed this little shroud so that it looks as much as possible like that and it will even fit in there 
only just. Um, and I'm going to, once I um, put these cables on here, solder those up, I'm going to fill that with uh, silicon sealant to um, make sure it's all nicely insulated. So, let's get on with that. So in order to double, I've got two coils, two output coils, and I'm going to wire them in parallel so that I get double the current, same voltage. Now comes the tricky part. Because my 3D printed design is a wee bit too snug. <coughs> okay, it's going to be tight. I could give myself an extra half a mil and print another one, or I could just gently tease it in, like that, oh yes, all right, let's see if it will actually fit. Here we go. All right, that, after a bit of very tight fit, is in. That goes in there. Okay, so what we have is mains coming in here. I've got my gloves on because uh, we're slipping into the extremely dodgy territory here. Mains coming in here, comes in through these wires here into this box. From there it goes to these wires here, mains into the transformer. Then the mains goes through here, through these relays, and then um, if the controller is happy, then it will go down through to the car. Um, what runs all this electronics here is the 19, or in this case, 18 volts AC. Um, so before I plug it in, I'm plugging it into the circuit board. I'm just going to measure the voltage, uh, voltage AC. AC voltage on here. So I'll turn it on and we should get 18 volts. Oh, well, that's interesting. I'm getting 24. Maybe it'll be 18 once it's got a load. Uh, it's 238 volts AC mains coming in right at this moment. There. So 24.75 volts going in. Uh, hopefully that's going to be okay for the circuitry in here. I don't know how 
well, how tolerant this part of the board is for variations on the, the original 19 volts. We shall see. I'm going to plug it in and um, hopefully all will be well. First of all, I'll turn it off. So we've got 0 volts AC. Plug that there, that in there. And if we're lucky, we'll get the ready green ready LED will light up. Let's see what happens. Ah, 237 volts. The green LED has turned on, which means the electronics are happy with the voltage coming in. The, um, the AC24, or is it 18? The AC voltage coming out of that little transformer is um, adequate for driving those electronics. So that looks like a success. So what I'm going to do now is fill this, take this back out and fill it with silicone so that it is just a tiny bit safer. So unplug that, unplug that. I'm leaving my gloves on because there'll probably be some capacitors in there that will zap me if I'm not careful. It's all unplugged from the mains. So, the main reason to um, gunk this up with silicone is to prevent water getting in and rusting it. And then I'm just going to um, put it all back together and let this dry on its own in its own good time. Solid. Okay, so I've screwed that in. That is very solid. It's all full of silicon sealant. So hopefully that will keep moisture out. And... And here's the T20 Torx again. Okay, it's all screwed up, and let's turn it on and see what happens. Excellent. It's 142 volts AC coming in. It is happy. That's fantastic. That's a job well done. Before I finish up, just to um, make it clear, what I have done here is not compliant with New Zealand regulations uh, so don't try this at home I'm merely showing you this for educational purposes and the last thing I'm going to do is put silicon sealant over these holes originally there was a very substantial plastic plug in there um, and before I put the silicon sealant on I'm going to put this little piece of foam in that I got from a random piece of foam um, so that there's no silicon sealant gumming up the screw heads. So put those little puppies in there, those in there, that in there, 
think there's been a reason. Not too much. And And that should be waterproof. Good. That is all done. All right. Thanks for watching. Cheers.